Well, I'm really excited for tonight. I, I feel the need to talk about romantic relationships when it comes to our relationship series. And if you didn't know uh, already, we, we are in a series called Healthy Relationships. And I absolutely love this series because if there's something that the enemy is attacking right now in this generation, it is relationships. Uh, it, it is pretty crazy even just to think about some of the statistics around relationships. And tonight, look, I, I, I could talk about a bunch of things. In fact, I'm going to try to talk about as much as I can in 31 minutes and 21 seconds. Uh, but just know this, is I can't cover absolutely everything tonight. And I know there's a lot of people in this room that find themselves in these two seasons. The first one is the single season and the next one is the dating season. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about those two seasons tonight. And then for the married people in the room, there's a bit of like an after credit scene I got for you at the end. So just, just hang in there. It's all right, we're not gonna kick out all the single people and the dating people. We won't do that. Uh, we'll talk about it when you guys are in the room as well. Um, but I've titled my message tonight, uh, breaking up with compromise. Breaking up with compromise. And I just want to say this from the get-go. Tonight, my intention is not to bring condemnation. We read it before, is, is that God did not send His Son to this world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. In other words, Jesus did not come to point His finger at you. He came with arms wide open saying, there is a better way to live your life. The difference between condemnation and conviction is this. Condemnation will convince you to back yourself into a corner and it's almost like you've got to be shameful and guilty over what you've done and that there's no way out. But conviction is when the Holy Spirit comes into your life and says the way you're living is not okay, but there is a way out. He is the way, the truth, the life. His name is Jesus. In fact, in Romans 8 verse 1, it says this, for there now is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So tonight, can, can I just say this from the get-go? is that I haven't come to bring condemnation. I believe that the Holy Spirit is gonna come in this room and convict us of a bunch of things, but the intention is not to bring condemnation. The second thing I wanna say is this, is if you are struggling in this area of relationships, of sexual purity, of all these things that we find when it comes around relationships, the chances are you are not the only one. <laughs> Can I just say this, just to break the ice, is that I have struggled at different points in my life in these areas. Is that okay? Actually, put your hand up if you struggled in this area. Like, come on, come on, we've got to break. Yeah, there we go. I see like every hand. So you are not the only one. I've not come to point a finger at you, but I've come to show you the way that Jesus has intended us to live when it comes to relationships. Um, but, but the reason why I want to speak about this tonight is honestly, I, I, I'm sick of hearing uh, the stories of amazing leaders and amazing people and amazing people of God that have built uh, years and years of a relationship with God taken out in a moment where they didn't have wisdom in a romantic relationship. I've heard of too many stories of people that got on fire for God and then all of a sudden they started dating someone that wasn't good for them and only three weeks later they find themselves out of church. I, I, I've seen too much of this. In fact, the statistics are quite crazy when it comes around uh, relationships. The statistics tell us this, that 44% of marriages in Australia end in divorce. It, it would also tell us this, that 60% of second marriages in our country end in divorce. And you're probably sitting there going, well, that's okay, because like, that's the world, but us Christians are killing it. But the statistics would tell us that 25% of Christian marriages end in a divorce. So the reality is, is I just feel the need to speak into this area because I do not want to give the enemy what he wants. I know this, that the Bible says that the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I want to say as for me and my church, as for me and my generation, the enemy is not going to devour us. He is not going to take us out, but we are going to take a stand and take back ground for the kingdom of God. Come on, I, I believe that there is a target on relationships. How do I know this? Is a God created marriage. He did, He created it, He trademarked it, which means this, the enemy has a target for it because God created it. So I, I just wanna bring some light into relationships here tonight. Um, 
I, I first want to talk to the single people. Where are the single people at? Come on, let, put your hand up nice and proud. The reason why you're probably single is because some of you did this, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm single. It's complicated, you know. Oh, I love calling out single people. It's just really awkward. It's awesome. Um, put your hand up n- nice, and, nice and high if you're single. Come on. All the people that are dating and, and, and in marriages, let's give it up for all the single people in the room. Come on, we love you. In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, put up your hand if you're single and you brought your physical Bible here tonight to church. Come on. Now, take a look around the room. These are the people you want to get coffee with. Look at that. Just quickly, just take a look. There we go. Okay, great. And if you get married after the service, I take full credit for it, okay? Um, but I want to talk to the single people. See, the reality is this, is if you want to end happily married, you need to start single and healthy. And uh, I'm a firm believer in this, is that healthy relationships are built on healthy individuals. Now, why is it important to get our individual life right with God? Because you were born an individual, you will die an individual, and one day you will stand before God as an individual. It's not like your spouse will be there. It's not like your friends will be there. It's not like your parents will be there. You will give an account for your life and God will either say, well done, good and faithful servant or you wicked and slothful servant. The reality is this, is we need to get right in our individual self with God. And I believe that if you are single in this room is that God has an amazing plan for your life. In fact, I just wanna tell you this, is that marriage will not fix things uh, marriage will, will, will not like kind of wish all your wishes, uh, issues away, but marriage will actually magnify the things that are currently in your life. So you've got to be someone that puts in the work now so that you can be the person that you intend to be in a relationship. I've got three things that I, I wanted to speak into when it comes to this single season. So my, my first thought is this, if your relationship status is single, deal with your issues. Deal with your issues. Uh, 1 John, we're going to turn our Bibles. 1 John uh, 1 verse 5 to 9. If you have your Bibles. I believe there's a Bible revival happening in City Point. I believe there's a Bible revival happening in our generation. It's important that we have a Bible and we read it. And it says this. It says, this is the message uh, we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, Yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Then catch this, verse nine, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all un righteousness. What a powerful Scripture. And, and this is what is clear to me in this Scripture is that hiding our issues does not work. In fact, it, it encourages us to confess, repent and lay down our issues at the feet of Jesus. If you are in a single season, even if you find yourself in a different season in life, can I tell you, the greatest time to deal with your issues is right now. It's not down the track. It's not in a couple of weeks. It's not in a couple of months. It's not when you're married, but it is right now. Um, Has anyone ever carried the groceries from the car uh, to the pantry? Has anyone ever done that? Now, there's two people when it comes to this moment. There's the people that are weird and they like to take one grocery bag at a time. Like, uh, that's just weird, okay? And then there's the people that understand the way to do it and that is taking all the groceries uh, at one time. Come on, I'm not coming back for another trip. Doesn't matter how many grocery bags there are, I'm gonna muscle up and I'm gonna do it. Anyways, it, it's become a whole lot uh, more complicated. Now there's brown bags, like brown paper bags. They start ripping and you're like juggling things and it's crazy. Uh, maybe just me, because I don't know how to pack them properly. But um, when, when, when you get like the grocery bags from the back of the car, often we are quite optimistic in how much we can carry. And I, I remember being a young boy and I'd grab like 10 bags and my dad would say, he'd be like, Liam, probably don't grab that many bags because it's going to get heavy. And I'm like, no, it's all good and I pick it up. I'm like, oh, that's not heavy at all. 
And then I probably walk about five meters and it starts to get heavier and heavier and heavier. And all of a sudden I realize I got like 50 meters to go and there's marks all over my arms from when all the groceries were. But the reality is this, is that it's not like the bags actually got heavier. It's just the longer I carried it, the heavier it was. Can I say this is similar to the issues that we have in life. So many times we pick up our issues and we want to bring them into our future. And it's not like the issues change, but over time, can I tell you, your issues will get heavier. They will weigh you down a whole lot more. They will start to hurt you a whole lot more. So it's important that you deal with your issues now. (laughs) We've got to deal with our issues. Now, the good news is, is you're not the only one with issues. Everyone in the room has issues. We all have issues. Is that okay? Like, it feels freeing to say that. There are, there are so many things that we have to deal with in life. And, and hear me in this, it, it's not about being single and perfect, but it's about living a life of progression that every single day you wanna work on yourself so that you get better. Because you can't just pray for the person that you're, you're gonna marry one day because you gotta understand they're also praying for you. And if none of you are dealing with your issues, then you're probably not gonna grow up into who God has called you to be. Yes, pray for the person that you're going to meet, but also be willing to put in the work. You gotta be willing to put in the work. There's three issues. There's so many issues that I could talk about tonight, but three issues that I often see that take out people in relationships. The first one is this, is our past issues. You know, I'm grateful for me in, in my life Uh, that when I was single, I dealt with a lot of my past issues. Now, can I just be real and vulnerable for a second? Is I didn't deal with all of my issues. There were some past issues that I bought from my childhood that I brought into dating and marriage. And I'm so grateful that I have the most amazing wife on the planet Earth that had so much grace for me as I was dealing with these issues. Can we give it up for Pastor Maddie? Isn't she amazing? I'm sorry to break it all the single people. The 10 out of 10 in all areas has already been taken. That's my wife. Um, So you're going to have to settle for something a bit less. But um, I'm just getting brownie points. This is amazing. Uh, Anyways, I, uh, I, I did a deal with some issues. And here's the reality. If you're single and you don't start to deal with some issues, those issues will have collateral damage. When you enter into a relationship, it won't only affect you, it will affect the person you're in a relationship with. So it's important that you deal with the issues now. And I I see so many people just sweep under the rug what happened to them in their childhood and different issues that they had. Can I just say this, is I'm not saying that they're small issues. These issues are hard to deal with. Trust me when I understand that it's hard to deal with is that it's hard to face sometimes, but we have to be willing to deal with these things. We gotta be willing to deal with the unforgiveness in our heart, the resentment in our heart. We have to be willing to to deal with the real stuff, the trauma that has taken place so that we aren't carrying that into a relationship. Now, once again, it's not about being perfect, but it's about progressing and working on ourselves so that we are better for the people around us and for our future husband or wife down the track. The second issue that I often find out that takes out this generation particularly is lust issues. Can I go here? We we are living in one of the most like over-sexualized times in society. It's pretty crazy now that when you walk down Westfield, Carindale, uh, do you have to censor what your kids look at because of the way that the world is? In fact, there is a study and it it was done in Australia, it was actually done by QUT uh, that talks about this thing called pornography. And, and it found out this, that 86% of males and nine, uh, sorry, 69% of females have engaged with pornography in our nation. And it's crazy because I believe that pornography is ripping off a generation. And once again, I'm not here to bring condemnation and point a finger at you, but I'm here to tell you that there is a better way to do relationships. There is a better design that God has for your life. And so many times we feel so much shame and guilt when it comes to this thing, but we've got to deal with our lust issues. I've seen time and time again, people bring these things into relationships and once again, it does collateral damage. In fact, we, we are finding in this time that people are even bringing this into marriage and it's not only affecting spouses, but it's affecting kids and their kids and it's just making everything a mess. Can I just say this, is as Christians, we got to hold the line and say enough is enough as for me and my house, as for me and myself, I will not stoop down to culture, but I'm going to get better and I'm going to deal with my lust issues. 
We've got to deal with these things. The third issue that I find that often we bring into relationships are trust issues. Issues from past relationships. If you've had past relationships, it's important that you deal with the issues that you have from them so that your lens of your new relationship isn't a broken relationship, but is a healthy and whole relationship. You've got to deal with the trust issues in your life. I believe that it's time as single people, we deal with our issues. And if you're single, how about you say amen? Amen. Come on, if you're single, how about you say amen? amen? I love it. Moving on. I, I just feel the need to say this too, sorry. There, there is freedom in the name of Jesus for all those things. And, and I, I just wanna read this in Psalm 32 verse five. Uh, it says this, David speaking, he says, then I acknowledge my sin to you being God and did not cover up my iniquity. Uh, I, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Can I tell you, there is no shame, there is no condemnation, there is no guilt that can be attached to these things, but Jesus wants to come and bring freedom to people tonight. I believe that there's some people even right now drawing a line in the sand saying, hey, I've dealt with this thing for too long and tonight is the night I'm gonna get real with God and I'm gonna deal with these issues in my life. Second thing for single people is this, if your relationship status is single, establish healthy habits. It isn't just about letting go. It's about establishing healthy habits. In Ephesians 4 uh, verse 22 to 24, it says this, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self. We just talked about that, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. The time to create disciplines and healthy habits in your life is right now if you are single. Don't wait till you're dating. Don't wait till you're married, but establish the habits now. Because the reality is this, is dynamics change when, when you're married. Dynamics change when you have kids, but often your disciplines will remain the same. The foundations that you build for your life now will remain the same through all those seasons. Now, I, 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 I'm not saying in this, just start the habits and start the things, but you've got to establish them. What does it mean to establish something? It means that in the hard times, in the good times, every single day, you are committed to doing these things as a bare minimum so that when you have a relationship one day, you will carry these disciplines with you in your life. There's some critical disciplines and habits we need to establish. The first one is this, is reading the Bible. (laughs) Come on, if you're single, you gotta start reading the Bible. Brayden's the only one that's excited about that. (laughs) Some more people are excited now. You need to pray. You gotta establish a prayer life. It would never be more easy to pray and establish a prayer life than right now if you're single. And I understand that some of you, and and, if not all of you, have busy worlds. You've got a lot of things going on. But when you have kids and they wake you up at 5.45 in the morning, it's gonna be harder to establish a prayer life then. Not saying that it's impossible, but if you establish it now, maybe you might just carry the discipline through with you when things are added to your life. You gotta establish mentorship and discipleship into your life. Who is speaking into your life? Who have you given permission to speak into your life? You gotta establish giving. You gotta establish serving. These are just some of the healthy habits that we can establish in our life if we are single. It gets more complicated when you add things into the mix. So establish it now and you'll be grateful for that later. The third thing is this, if you're single, if if your relationship status is single, you need to seek God first. Can I just say, stop seeking, finding a date above God. You need to seek God first. I love Matthew 6, 33. It says this, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Now, this is not specifically talking about dating or finding a spouse, but the principle still, still applies that we need to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all the other things in life will be added unto us. Seek first the kingdom. If your posture in worship when you walk in here on a Sunday night is determined by finding someone to do life with and, and date rather than 
worship God wholeheartedly, then maybe you just need to check your priorities. Like I've been there before and maybe you're single right now and like you're in worship and you're like, I'm worried about, you know, if my crush is looking right now, I, I don't want to bawl out my eyes in front of her, you know. I don't want to get on my knees before God and get vulnerable. Like I'm a man of God, you know. I'm going to come in with my coffee and I'm just going to like maybe put one hand up and hand in the pocket and then you act like you're looking at the time at the back of the foyer, but you start looking across. You're like, oh yeah, you know, she's, she's watching. Um, Come on, we've all, we've all been there. Um, but but it, it, if, if your worship is determined by that, then maybe you just need to check your priorities. Uh, maybe, you know, even if you spend more time in the DMs than you are in the Word of God, maybe you just need to check your priorities. Can I just say that? Um, if you spend more time in church thinking about that other person than you do thinking about God, or take more time texting them in the middle of the service and taking notes. Maybe you just need to check your priorities. It's important that we seek first the kingdom of God. I remember when Maddie was added unto my life, uh, I was, I literally was seeking first the kingdom. I was at youth camp just packing down and she saw this amazing man of God that was packing down the, the tent. And she's like, that is someone I want to marry, you know. Uh, I didn't give you context. She friends owned me six times before that. And, uh, but the last time she asked me for a coffee, and I'm here to tell you that the friend zone's not the end zone. Come on, there is hope for some of you in the room. It is not the end zone. <laughs> um, but I, I want to speak to the other side of the equation as well, because yes, we need to seek first the kingdom of God, and that's important. Um, but, but also, you need to be willing to talk to people from the opposite sex. I, I think there's a phenomenon happening at the moment where like the homies will hang out with the homies and the girls will hang out with the girls and like they will go dinner hang over here and these guys will go dinner hang over here and you don't talk to each other. Like, can I just speak to that side of the equation for a second? You need to seek first the kingdom of God, but it's okay to talk to someone from the opposite sex if you're single. Like, it's not weird. Let's stop making that weird in church. Like when that guy comes over, and it's scary and there's five girls in the group and he's just trying to, you know, introduce himself. And we, we, we say it's weird. It's not weird. He's, he's just trying to be him, you know, but don't be weird as well. <laughs> I think it's important to say that. Don't be a weirdo. But, um, but I, I think it's important, like, if, if you were single, you should be going to dinner hangs after the service. Can I just say that? Like, you might find someone at dinner hangs. Like, if you're single here tonight, Please do yourself a favor and go to the playoffs. Even if you don't like basketball, introduce yourself to someone and that might, may be the person that you've been praying for. Can I get an amen? Come on, I'm just trying to help some people out. I'm trying to help the single community out. But I, I honestly think it's a massive trend at the moment. Like, you know, we're gonna leave early and we're just gonna hang out. Girls hang out with girls. Boys hang out with girl, boys. Like, it's like, we're not in high school. Come on, let's just hang out together. Um, that'd be great. So if I could add something to this point, it would be, if your relationship status is single, seek God first, but don't be weird. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm gonna talk to the dating people quick. I'm running out of time. I'm gonna talk to the people that are dating. Let's give it up for the single people, come on. Um, I'm gonna talk to the people that are dating right now. I wanna say this, if your relationship status is dating, boundaries are a blessing, not a buzzkill. Can I say that? See, I, I like to view boundaries as like the, the guardrails, you know, like the side rails on the side of a highway and they're there to protect you. They're there to guide you. It's like the lines on a highway. Have you ever been to a country where there's like no road lines and everything's just chaotic? Like I'm so grateful perimeters and boundaries and not one person on the highway that I've ever been driving with points at the guardrails and goes, they're the worst things on planet earth. They're trying to restrict me. They're, you know, oh, I, I don't like the guardrails. Like, can I just say this? Boundaries are not there to restrict you. They're not there to be a buzzkill. They are there to protect you and guide you in the course that God has for your life. They are. And we've got to understand God's plan uh, for boundaries and God's plan for a couple of boundaries in our life. The first one I want to talk about is boundaries for sexual purity. In Genesis 2, verse 22 to 24, it says this, and the Lord God made a woman from the rib uh, He had taken out of man and brought her to the man. I, I love that the woman was not uh, taken out of the man's head to be over him or taken out of his foot to be under him, but taken out of his side to be next to him in this life. 
In verse 23, it says, Then the man said, uh, This is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She is to be called woman because she was taken out of a man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. See, it, it tells us God's parameters for sex here. And I want to talk about this because I think this is important and it's ripping a lot of people off in our society. Sex is to be had with one male and one female within the confines of the marriage covenant. So it's important that we understand that anything outside of this is outside of God's plan for sex. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about here. The first one is this, is that sex is not bad. I, I think if we're not careful, we, in, in the church, we paint sex as a bad thing. Can I tell you, sex is amazing. Sex is great. And all the married people said, amen. Like, oh, there's a lot of married people here tonight. Come on. Oh, they're, they're clapping and everything. It's crazy. But, but it's awesome. It's great. Like, it is next level. There, there's not too many things in my life that I've experienced like it. And it's okay for me to say that. Why? Because God designed and created sex. And, and I, I believe that if God designed it, we've got to go back to the designer and the creator about his parameters on it. Because just like any great gift, there needs to be, we need to operate within the parameters or the instructions that God has given us. You know, like, like my wedding ring here, it, it's valuable to me. That's why I don't just throw it around and, and do crazy things with it. Can I tell you, sex is valuable to God and that's why there's so many parameters around it because it is such a blessing. And I just wanted to talk about it a bit tonight, but I, I believe that it's not bad, but it's actually a good thing. Now, often, you know, when people are dating, and, and I, I've heard this a couple of times, people go, well, you know, times have changed. It's 2024. You know, the, the Bible doesn't even talk about dating. But can I tell you that maybe times have changed, but something that will never change is the Word of God and God's parameters and commands over our life. And we can't, stoop down our level of thinking to culture, we always have to use the Word of God as our filter. So I know times have changed, but the Word of God does not change and God's stance on this has not changed. And then I hear this question then, well, how far is too far? Has anyone heard that question before? Like, well, how far? Uh, I just find this such an interesting question because like if my dad asked me to clean his room, uh, not clean his room, clean my room, um, and I was like, uh, I, I went back to my dad and I was like, well, dad, um, how far do I need to clean my room so that I don't get in trouble? He'd be like, that's such a weird question. Just clean your room. No, but how many things do I have to pick up before you're gonna get mad? Well, that's just silly. Just clean your room. And I think so many times we're like this with God. God gives us a command and we're like, well, God, how far can we go to the line of sin before you're going to get mad at us? But that is not the right question to ask. It shouldn't be, how far can I go from God before He's going to get mad? It, it should be if you're dating, how close can we get to the presence of God? Come on, it, it's got to be, how close can we get to His presence? And, and if you want some parameters, I would just say this as a guide, I would say uh, if you weren't comfortable doing something in front of Jesus or in front of your parents while dating, don't do it. <laughs> so why are boundaries important? Look, I, I look at the life of David and, and Bathsheba and I, I look at that. This is a man after God's own heart that was taken out in a moment because he didn't have parameters or boundaries around his life. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18 to 20, it says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do not, uh, do not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. Uh, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. I love Rich Wilkerson Jr. says this. He says, having sex before marriage is not a matter of virginity. It is a matter of purity. And I love that. So here are some boundaries that can safeguard you and your purity. There's a couple of things that I would just put, and these are just a couple of things. You can create your own parameters, but I just wanted to give people some practical parameters tonight. First one is this, create a safe word when things are getting too far. Second thing is this, don't travel together. There is a 
common trend where people like to travel together before they're married now. But like if you're playing near a thorn bush, you, you can't be surprised when maybe you get hurt. And I think so many times we, once again, we put ourselves in environments that are really hard to stay pure with God. And then we're like, well, why did we stuff up? Like, why did we fall into sin? Can I just encourage you not to travel together? That's amazing when you're married. I'm, I'm so grateful for the trips that I go on with my wife and we get to go overseas and do amazing things. But please don't do it when you are dating. Uh, don't share a bed. Don't live together or no sleepovers. Um, Maddie used to tell me this all the time, is nothing good happens past 10 p.m. And it's quite true, unless you're in a church revival meeting. All the above is amazing when you're married, but there's a grace for it then. There isn't a grace for it when you're dating. The keys can come. Uh, re respect the boundaries of your parents and do not cross that line. For, for you are under the authority of your parents right now, so don't cross that line. Uh, don't watch movies together that wouldn't please Jesus. Don't listen to music that talks about sexual behaviours. And don't drink too much alcohol together alone or just full stop. I believe there's some great parameters and boundaries for you so that you can protect your purity in this dating season. Is this helping anyone tonight? Oh, thank you for the keys. Shout out to Josh. Isn't Josh amazing? I love Josh Abate. He's amazing. Can I say this as well? If you have crossed the line, it's never too late to establish parameters and boundaries. Maybe you've crossed that. Once again, I haven't come to bring condemnation. I believe that Jesus teaches us there is a better way to do relationships. I believe that He teaches us that there is this parameters that are gonna protect our purity and the parameters that are gonna encourage us to walk in the ways of Him. The second parameters we need to set are some goals when we're dating. Here's a couple of goals you can have. Pray together daily. Serve together. Do devotions together. Go on date nights together. Like it's not just about staying away from the bad things, but it's also about establishing the good things in your life so that you walk in the ways of God. So the second thing is this, if your relationship status is dating, don't be unevenly yoked. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, it says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Can I just say this for all the single people? Flirt to convert does not work. You're like, oh, but they're a project. Well, let them be God's project first. <laughs> then He can give them to you. I, I, I believe that we gotta evenly yoke ourselves in this life. You know, one of the most attractive things about my wife and the reason why I put a ring on it was because she was like, hey, you know, I'm a Christian. Like we had similar values, we had similar morals. And I'm like, that is someone I wanna do life with. In fact, when I got down on one knee, I said, there are two great decisions that we often make in our life. The first one is accepting Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. And the second one is deciding who we will do this life together with. And I said, that is you, Madison Ashley Tibbetts. Will you marry me? And she said, yes. But I believe that it's important that we yoke ourselves with the right people. Why? Because an uneven yoke, what it would do, and the yoke is a thing that pulls the plow and oxen would go in there and to be uneven, one would be strong and one would be weak. What would happen is rather than plowing in a straight line, they would start to plow in circles. And if you unevenly yoke yourself in this life, you will find your life going in circles and circles and circles. You will find your relationship going in circles. But can I just tell you, is you want someone that's gonna understand that Jesus is always gonna be your first love. Jesus will always be your first priority. Jesus will be your everything and they're just gonna come in second every time. Don't unevenly yoke yourself. E even Christians, like if they gave their life to God two weeks ago, let them do some work. Let them establish a relationship with God before you sweep them up, come on. Uh, I've seen too many people serving it on fire for God and all of a sudden they start dating and, and it's like they stop serving, they stop being on fire, they, they start to lower their standard. Let's not be those people. I wanna be people that when we start dating and when we get married, we are more on fire than ever for God than we have ever been in our entire life. I'm grateful for my wife because every day she makes sure I'm more on fire than when we first met. And I can confidently say this, 
that she has pushed me into the presence of God every single day. In fact, three weeks ago, she didn't see me read my Bible in the morning. And as we were going to bed that night, she said, babe, I'm just keeping you accountable. Like I didn't see you spend time with God today and I was tired, I was exhausted, but I'm grateful for a wife that keeps me accountable. I'm grateful for a wife that I can do this life with and be on fire with. Third thing is this, if your relationship status is dating, covering is critical. Proverbs 11 verse 14 says, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counsellors, there is safety. There is safety. Without covering, you will feel alone but you will feel safe when people are watching over you. What, I, what do I mean by covering? I mean mentors and people that are willing to disciple you, not just individually, but willing to speak into your relationship. You gotta have people that are a safe place. You gotta have people that speak into the things that are hard. You gotta have people that will challenge you. You gotta have people that are ahead of you in the journey that you aspire to be. And you have to have people that are praying for you in this season. And the thing about submission, the thing about covering is it often hurts. When I, talk, when I think about submission, I think about wrestling. When someone is submitting in wrestling, like it's not like they're there submitting like happily. They're there in a lot of pain submitting. And this is a beautiful picture of what true submission looks like. Can I tell you, submission isn't submission until it hurts you a little bit. It's not submission until, until maybe it goes against your desires and your feelings, but someone loves you enough to speak out something over your life and call you to a higher standard. I'm grateful for the leaders in my life that have called me to a higher standard. Every single time they have, I haven't been happy about it, but I've been grateful for it later. If you are dating, you need to get under covering. And the thing is, is covering isn't accidentally found. Covering is sought out. You gotta go up to people and say, hey, I give you full permission to speak into our relationship. Any blind spots, any things that you see, I give you full permission because we're not gonna know everything in this life. Ask someone to mentor you. Ask someone to cover you. It says a couple of things for the single and dating people. If you're married, I've got seven rapid fire things for you. Where are the married people at? Come on, let's give it up for the people that are married and holding the standard. Seven things, rapid fire. First one is this, keep loving and serving God. I think it's important that you keep loving and serving Him. Love Him more tomorrow than you do today. It's, an out, it's not about perfection, it's about progression. Every single day, I wanna put my hand on my heart and say, I know Jesus more today than I did yesterday. Keep loving and serving God. The second one is this, keep your wife or your husband as your second love. The statistics would tell us that often when kids move out of the home is that is when divorce peaks. Why? Because often we, we exchange our second love for our kids. And uh, you know, kids are amazing. We had our first kid three months ago today, Judah James Barlow. He is a blessing to this planet. But I'm gonna unashamedly tell him every time that Maddie is my second love after God. And then he comes in a nice third. I, I love him a lot. But I want, I want to love my wife more than anything else apart from God. I've got to keep my love on for my wife. It's important. The third thing is this, keeping communication about everything. The, the good thing about that there's nothing to hide is there's nothing to hide. You've got to communicate about everything. What do you mean everything? I mean everything. Like everything. Don't leave anything assumed. Like just over communicate. Fourth one is this, keep undistracted and intentional time a priority. In a distracted generation, I believe it's important that we fight for undistracted and intentional time. I, I see it time and time again, the time that often we get with our spouse, we are scrolling on Instagram reels and we're not even talking to one another. It's important that we fight for intentional time and conversation with each other. Next one is this, keep dating. Mark Driscoll says this, it's a bit savage, but I'm just gonna quote him so that none of you can get mad at me. He says, date your wife or date your husband before someone else does. And it's a pretty savage statement, but, but I love what he's talking about there. You, you gotta keep your love. Just because you put a ring on it doesn't mean the work is done. Come on, you, you gotta fight for that love that you have for your spouse. 
You, you've got to fight to have date. It gets hard. I understand the last three months have been the hardest time to get a date night in there on planet Earth. But we still did a date night when Judah was like 10 weeks old. And it was scary. We are like checking the monitor, you know, when he was at home. We're like, is he okay? But we've we got to fight for those times. We've got to fight for those moments. The next one is this, keep each other accountable. In our spiritual walk, in our life, we've got to keep each other accountable. And the last one is this, keep having sex and fight for purity. I'm going to go there because it rips a lot of people off. I believe that it is a gift from God within the confines of marriage. And therefore we need to fight to do this every, well, every single day if you want, but we, we need to fight to do this all the time. I can't believe that came out of my mouth. <laughs> be blessed, married people, be blessed. Um, but I think this is important. We gotta keep our intimacy. Is that Maddie isn't just my best friend. She, she is my best friend, but she's also my wife. And I gotta treat her like my wife. So I hope this has helped some people here tonight. Whether you're single, whether you're dating, whether you're married, and uh, I, I really feel like the Holy Spirit's been pressing on, on people's hearts throughout this entire sermon, just revealing things that we need to get better at, revealing things that we need to grow in. Can I say this, that I'm not perfect in, in these things, is that every single day I wanna fight for progression. Every single day I wanna be a better husband. Every single day I wanna be a better man. Every single day I wanna know Jesus more and more and more. And I believe that this whole theme of relationships and this whole topic of relationships isn't a matter of making it, but it's a matter of progressing in our life and growing closer to God and one another. And I love what it says here as I close. In Matthew 22, verse 36 to 20, it says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Someone asked Jesus. And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The reason why I would bring up this Scripture is it teaches us a foundational thing in this life. And that is, if you wanna be a healthy individual or if you want healthy relationships, you first need to love God with all your heart, mind and soul. There is an order to these loves. It says you gotta love God first. Second one is this, is that you will know your identity and have an appreciation for who you are and when you have that, then you can love others as you love yourself. But it's all hung on our relationship with God. And I've got, I'm, I'm gonna have a diagram that pops up behind me on this screen. And I, I like to call this the Christian love triangle. And I love it because if you see here, God is always our first love. It, it, it's, it's always the thing that we're trying to pursue. We're trying to pursue God. Is He is always gonna be my first love. And the reality is this, is as I grow closer to God, if, if I was to move up that triangle and as Maddie grows closer to God, we actually get closer together. But it's important that we're not just focused on each other. It's important that we are always focusing our love upon God. Now, if you're single and you don't have a partner in the equation, the only connection that you have is God. So it's important that we fight for our love for God. Could I have everyone's heads bowed and eyes closed upon this place? Maybe tonight, just some things I've been talking about, maybe God's been pressing on your heart that you need to come back to a relationship with Him. I believe there's the first group of people in the room, you're people that maybe have fallen short of the glory of God. Maybe you've walked away from God. And if you're being real tonight, you don't have a relationship with God. But tonight, you wanna say enough is enough. I'm not gonna leave this room without starting a relationship with God again. This is a moment for you. And the second group of people is the people that have maybe never heard about God. The reality is this, as Jesus died on a cross for you, three days later, He rose again. Why? So that we could have a relationship with God. And maybe that's a new truth to you. Can I tell you, a relationship with God will change everything about your life. In fact, the Bible says that we can build our life upon the sand, which is gonna shake and change, or we can build our life upon the rock, which is a relationship with God. And regardless of what comes our way, we will have a sturdy foundation to stand upon. 
So if you're in this room and maybe it's for the first time or maybe you wanna come back to God, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. No one's looking, but this is just a moment between you and God. This is a moment saying, this is the start of something new. This is a moment that will change your life. No one's looking, but this is a moment for you to draw a line in the sand. So one, can I tell you, God loves you so much. The Bible says that nothing will separate us from the love of God. No sin, no shame, no guilt, no mistake that you have made. I feel like there's some people in the room, you're like, well, I'm just so distant from God. Can I tell you, you're just one turn away from Him. Two, God loved you so much that He died on a cross for you and He rose again three days later. And three, who are those people tonight that say, you know what, I wanna start a relationship with God or I wanna re redo my, yeah, I see that hand over there on the left-hand side. <laughs> Incredible, is there anyone else tonight that says, I wanna start a relationship? I see that hand down there at the back. Incredible, incredible decision. Incredible decision. I see that hand. I see that hand as well down the front. Incredible, incredible. Is there anyone else tonight? Just as I look from the left, I see that hand over there on the left-hand side. Incredible decision. Awesome. We're just going to bow our heads and pray. God, we thank You for every single person in this room. And we specifically thank You for the ones that have made those decisions in this moment. God, I thank You that everything is changing, that the old would be gone and the new would come. And I pray that today, that You will give them a fresh start, that Your grace and Your peace and Your love would wash over them. And we thank You for this in Jesus' mighty Name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, hey, can we put our hands together for those people? Come on, we can do better than that. The Bible says that all of heaven is rejoicing when just one comes home.